Hello and welcome back to the Wisdom of Odin here at the Odin statue in Munich, Germany. Of course I couldn't come back to Germany and not go see the Odin statue here, buried away in Arabella Park in Munich. Uh, it really is fascinating how much just like right out there is just a path people walk by and then there's just this little wood trail and then this magical statue to Odin. If you haven't already, I do have an entire video exploring the history of here and the first reveal of it. Uh, so make sure you go back and check that out if you want to learn about the history. Uh, but today I want to talk about a subject that was in my inbox quite a bit. So anytime I'm looking for a subject or I'm, I'm trying to figure out what people want me to talk about, I go to my inbox on Instagram and I basically look through the messages and I say, okay, what do people want to know? What do people want to figure out? And I actually had like five messages all talking about what to do when the gods go silent. Well, hello, Mr. Owl. It's good to hear you. So yeah, it seems like a lot of people getting into the faith for the first time um, get those first big experiences, they have those first moments, they give those first offerings, and then all of a sudden they go through a dry spell. They stop feeling the gods, they stop hearing or having sensations or new experiences, and then all of a sudden it feels like the gods have left them. And I feel like this is where a lot of people end up leaving the faith. Um, and so I really want to address this for beginners, but I also want to talk about people who have been in the faith for a while that also go through these things, because I go through them as well, and I want to talk with you on how to reconnect with them. Uh, and how I go through these dry spells or how do I deal with disconnect. So that, that is today's topic, talking about what happens when the gods go silent, or at least they go silent to us. So starting here for the beginners, for the people getting into the faith for the first time, um, I think the best thing I can tell you right now is that this happens to everyone. Anyone who gets into Norse paganism, Germanic paganism, really any form of religion, I feel like, goes through these phases where all of a sudden they feel like the gods have left them. Um, now, I don't know exactly where this idea, maybe it's just general pagans' fault of, you know, saying that the gods are always with us. Like, in a way they are because, like, at least the religion, our spirituality is always with, with us and the sense of nature nature spirits um you know we live on earth we live on your and you know yes there's always elements of the gods and elements of paganism around but this idea that the gods are always there for our beck and call i think is a misconception that gets thrown around a lot um like you know it depends on how you see the gods like if you see the gods as you know beings that have their own agendas as beings that go off and do their own things or whether they're metaphysical ideas regardless of their metaphysical ideas or regardless if they are actual beings with intentions um you know either way they're not always going to be around. You're always not always going to be connected to wisdom, to wandering, to Odin. And so he's not always going to be around. And, you know, more UPG kind of stuff is, you know, anyone that follows Odin kind of knows that he's kind of a dick sometimes and he kind of wanders off uh, and leaves you alone. <laughs> yeah, I feel like most people I talk to have experiences where Odin just kind of appears and then disappears after he kind of gives you what he needs to give you. Uh, so, you know, every god and deity is going to be different. That's why I always recommend people go for deities like Thor and Freya during those dry spells because Thor and Freya are very easily uh, easy to connect to and maybe even Freya in general. Um, then of course if you're living near the ocean going to speak to Njord or Aegir, um, you know those kind of connections, those bigger picture ideas, going to the mountains to connect to Skadi I think are really great things to do or just going into the woods to connect to your local land spirits. Now what I'm going to say next actually kind of bridges over to people that have been in the faith for the while. What I feel like is what a lot of people don't realize is the fact that we let ourselves get disconnected connected more so than the gods just kind of fuck off. And so in the instance of like, you know, life in general, I mean, these smartphones being on Instagram all the time, being on Facebook or watching YouTube videos, um, you know, these are not the ways we connect to the gods. And if we do these things to excess, we find ourselves getting disconnected, not just from the gods, but from our lives, from our friends, from our own emotions um, and from everything. I mean, even today, like I got to tell you, I'm pretty darn tired today and really not in the, the best of moods just because it's been a such an insane busy couple of weeks I'm just dead but I wanted to come out and record this um, and I'm actually going to give an offering to Odin as well and you know I've accepted days like this like no I am tired because I was out in the hot sun wandering around for hours two days ago walking like 16 miles or something like that something absurd and that's why I'm tired it's not because Odin has left me it's not because Thor has left me or the gods have left it's just because I'm tired because I'm disconnected from myself that I don't feel the gods and I think this is one of 
of the things definitely for beginners that I feel like it's important for me to share with you is the fact that, you know, your life still goes on. Your life doesn't become perfect by becoming pagan. And you're going to have bad days and you're going to have tired days. You're going to have sick days. I mean, definitely when you're sick, if you're sick, you're not going to go off your sick bed and, you know, hail Odin or anything like that and expect a response. You're sick, man. Like, you know, your brain's all clogged up. Your nose is running and stuff like that. Or you're throwing up. Yeah, you're probably not going to feel a connection to the gods at that time. And so life gets in the way and that's okay. And I, I really, I feel like a lot of the time, this is the advice I, I message people back is I'm like, look, you know, you're probably just going through a period in your life that you are feeling disconnected because you know, there's just too much going on. Just go on with your life. And eventually you're going to feel those things again. And the best thing you can do is just, just keep going. And I almost guarantee you those sensations are going to come back because yes, in, in essence, paganism never goes anywhere because paganism is celebration of life that we live now. And yes, there are deeper components like Odin um, that are a little bit more loosey goosey when they kind of happen, but you just kind of have to take those where they come. And, you know, or at the very least, if you are feeling disconnected from a certain deity, go give an offering to them, you know, speak with them, ask what they want, you know, ask for their guidance, um, you know, give a good offering, promise them a different offering in return. And this is something I've done is you basically give an offering and say, hey, I really need help with this. And if you help me with this, I'll give you another offering of this amount. And, you know, this is like almost like making a deal with them. And I feel like this is also a good way. And I think this is good for travel as well. If you're about to make a long travel, I did this when I traveled across the ocean. I was like, okay, here's this offering for my safe travel. I will give another offering when I'm actually safe. <laughs> uh, so there's just a lot of little, uh, you know, tips and tricks in there. Uh, and again, that's why this video exists is just kind of share with you the ways that I've connected when I feel disconnected. I mean, shoot, it wasn't that long ago. Um, I was reading a journal entry back from like uh, January. I was feeling disconnected and I made a journal entry about it and I actually went out and performed a ritual and this is definitely what we're moving more to if you've been in this faith for a while uh, so I went out and performed a ritual I you know I got into my full shaman gear I had a drum I was beating it and I was in the middle of the mountains in the snow and I just still felt so disconnected I was like why and I was really trying to force that connection I was really trying to make something happen um, just so I felt that sensation so I felt the gods once again um, and I feel like a lot of us fall into this category at times and and then all of a sudden, all I had to do really was take that step back and think, wait, what am I really doing here? I'm in the mountains of California, snow all around. There's two literal ravens flying above me. People over there, we just gave an offering to the land spirits. I'm in the shaman gear beating a drum uh, in this place near a volcano. Who am I to beg more from life? You know, I was just in my own head. And the moment I realized I was just in my own head and got out of it, I pulled that stick out of my ass and decided to walk with it. That's when all of a sudden I felt connected once again. So funny thing I, I'm gonna say here before I kind of, you know, get to the end of this advice here is I hope you realize how much I love you all and how much I love making videos for you because last time I was here recording about Odin himself, um, I got eaten alive by bugs. Let me tell you, mosquitoes bit me in places I don't want mosquitoes to bite me and I wear long pants and I don't know how they got up there. So if you appreciate the content here and appreciate that I get eaten alive by bugs for you at times, please think about liking, subscribing and all that good YouTuber stuff and if you like it even more that I get eaten alive by bugs, maybe support me on Patreon. It would mean a lot and it'll pay for the bug cream to rub away all these wounds especially in the places they shouldn't be. Anyways, back to the video. Uh, so I, I know everyone's going to have different pieces of advice. So definitely put down below if you have different advice for when you feel disconnected from the gods um, and you <laughs> when you want to feel closer to them. But really this advice of, you know, a lot of the times I feel like we have these blinders on that we can't tell what's going on around us. We get so fixated on other parts of our lives um, that we're not able to see the gods. And I, I talked about this recently with Caleb on the Folk Podcast um, because he's become a father part too. He has two children now. And his ability to go out into the woods and howl at the moon are basically gone because he's got to take care of two children now with his wife. And so his ability to worship and honor the gods is much lesser than someone like me who has no children. And so just, just, it's okay. It really is what I'm telling you. It's okay to feel disconnected. The gods haven't left you. The gods have, are not disappointed in you. Now, they, I mean, they could be, I mean, if you made an oath and you broke the oath, maybe that's when they leave you. But if you're just living your life, you're feeling disconnected. Um, trust me, I don't think the gods have left you. I think you've just gotten busy or perhaps you're just in a rut. If you're just living the same nine to five every single day, which many of us get wrapped into, maybe it's just time to break that cycle. You know, the next time you have a day off, you know, yes, you might have to move some things around, 
Go out into nature, go out to the mountains, go out to a river, to a stream. I guarantee you have one nearby. Um, you may not have an Odin statue like this, but you have something. I mean, really this park right here is a park I've seen everywhere. Go into a park, give an offering, spend a few hours there disconnecting, or at the very least sit on your, you know, your porch, sit outside on a park bench, drink a cup of tea and just enjoy it. Slow down, get outside, and allow yourself to decompress because it really if you do not allow yourself that time to decompress from your life I think it's almost impossible to have a true genuine connection to the spiritualities that are all around us now again it's back and forth whether or not the gods are beings that kind of come and go you know if they have their own intentions and things you know I'll let the, I'll leave that for you to decide I personally believe yes they kind of have their own goals and intentions on what they do and so the gods are busy they're off doing other things they're working with other people uh, you know making other plans and so they don't always have time for you and maybe this is also something from our generation of you know me 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 I mean honestly it's a thing what these phones have done what social media has done what our culture has done at least Western culture in America is a made us so focused on the self and I find that if you're so focused on you why are the gods going to give you attention why is nature gonna care about you so really you know become humble slow down go outside and and I think you'd be really impressed how quickly you build that connection once again so as a mosquito has just bit me on my ass crack, I am now going to go give this offering to Odin and thank him for allowing me to wander once again, allowing me to come back because you know what I told him last time? You know what I said? Oh my gosh, oh yeah, they're definitely in there. You know what I said last time I was here? I was like, Odin, I wanna come back. I wanna come back to the spot and I wanna give an offering to you again because this has been such an amazing adventure. And now here I am once again about to give another offering. And let me show you what I'm about to get. So this is Waldmeister wine. So this is a wine uh, local to Germany for the most part, and it actually has some historical traditions as well as some spiritual connections and supposedly makes you feel really connected to the forest in a psychedelic way. Damn if it isn't delicious. So I'm gonna give some of this to Odin here. Again, thanking him for allowing me to come back here, thanking him for allowing me to speak with all of you and to talk about this amazing faith that is hard at times, but don't worry, it's hard for all of us at times because life is hard. But at the end of the day, it's absolutely amazing, and it's such an honor and a pleasure to talk about these gods with you. Thank you so very much, and until the hall, let's go. here nearly a year ago to witness upon this statue for the first time and after that I came back I spoke of you what we know of the histories and I left saying that I wish to return since then I have wandered far I've traveled the country that I'm from I've hailed the old gods I've held a ritual to you Odin where I led men down into Helheim to speak to the ancestors to rise us back up to Asgard, to bring you gifts, to bring you gifts of mead, of drink, of things we have crafted. Odin, we screamed your name that night. So much has changed. And in the mountains of California, in the snow-covered peaks, we hailed you once again, screaming to the moon, screaming to the stars. And here I am once more, traveling, meeting others, learning things, learning wisdom, learning the stories of history and sharing them once more. Hail to you, Odin, for allowing me to return. Hail to you, Odin, for allowing me to live this amazing life and for these amazing journeys. And I give this offering to you of mead, strong drink. Hail you, Odin.